just finished week one of the shredding season and there are a lot of things I did not expect to happen have already happened in the past seven days so we did start on I think February 28th 7th one of those two days and I started off at 182 something pounds 183 that was the end of my bulk eating 3300 calories um, typically it was about 350 grams of carbs uh, 100 grams of fat 110 and then uh, 200 grams of protein 210 so they were up there the numbers were up there 3300 was hard it was painful and I just couldn't wait to start cutting just because I wouldn't have to stress about eating every two hours eating a lot every two hours and I definitely should have planned it out more thoroughly but I think in the next bulk it'll be a lot easier because I'll know how to go into it and now we're in the cut one weekend seven days in and I am down to like 175 I believe 175 that is eight pounds down in seven days eight pound eight pounds down eight pounds down in seven days that's more than a pound per day ratio and it's crazy because you would think oh my gosh Alex that's really unhealthy and some would say like dude no matter how you lost that weight that's unhealthy and personally I thought that was unhealthy too but the more that I think about it, it makes sense on how this is happening. So I understand the first couple days you lose a lot of water weight. I remember last year, exactly almost a year ago, uh, when I first started cutting, I lost like five pounds in the first week. I was like, oh my gosh, great, this is gonna be easy. But realistically, that's all water weight. And that's the water, or the water that's being held in your body just because on the, the way that your body reacts and so realizing that I was on a bulk I thought okay yeah, I'm gonna lose like five pounds in the first week the first three or three or four pounds is gonna be water weight I lost eight pounds that's a lot and now that I think about it it was it might be because I came from a 3300 calorie surplus my maintenance is about a 2800 and I'm cutting down to 2400 calories per day so not only is my that I start from a caloric surplus and now I'm at a caloric deficit at such a quick manner um, it really shifts on how my body's reacting to everything one of the biggest uh, key components to why I'm losing so much water weight I believe is because when you're eating at 3300 calories you're gonna go over your daily sodium intake as a human which is about 2000 milligrams of sodium and I definitely pass that by at least six, seven hundred every day. And my body reacting to less calories, which is less sodium typically, because I am eating things with a little bit less sodium, but I'm not avoiding it. Like I'll still put salt on my eggs, I'll put hot sauce on my food, salsa, and it's not bad. It just makes you bloat uh, temporarily for a second. Maybe like a day it'll go down. It's, especially if you sleep, the next morning you'll wake up dry. Um, depending on how much sodium you intake, but I'm definitely closer to 2,000, if not maybe 1,600 uh, sodium milligram range, and that really flushed out my system. Like, where I find the biggest uh, change already with eight pounds gone, because you're not gonna lose eight pounds and not see a difference. You may, depending on how big you are, but being 183 starting off and dropping down to 175, a lot of it has gone away around my hip area, or. I guess right below the rib cage where your your lats start. Um, I lost a lot of uh, I guess like excess size in the area just because of all the bloating from bulking. I want to say that like the bulk or the cut from the bulk was going to be hard for me just because I knew I gained a little bit more fat than I should have. Um, last year I believe I started off at like a 15, 16 percent and I got into a 10 percent. I think this year I'm starting off at like an 18, 19, 20% body fat, which is pretty high because I could not see any abs. But now I'm seeing a little bit more, a uh, little bit more of my serratus, and my back is popping a little bit more because the size went down, the fat 
right below where the lat starts, so it makes it pop a little bit more. So that's a good thing. And yeah. So currently, I just got home from school. It's about 11.30. Uh, I'm probably gonna eat around 12.30ish. Today is Champions League soccer, so if you know about soccer or football, we got Champions League today. I think Real Madrid is playing. Or Juventus. I don't know. Someone's playing. And while I'm waiting to eat, I'm going to zip on some BCAAs. These are... One second. These are the BPI Best BCAAs. Focus. Or not. But uh, I do have a ghost shaker, whatever. Um, I only have ghost shaker bottles because they're cool. But I'm gonna eat in a little bit and I'll get back to y'all after that. What time is it? It is 10.51. Last time I recorded was at 12. <laughs> yeah, I might have taken a long nap and binged on some Riverdale. I just started Riverdale and I was scrolling through my Instagram feed actually like last night when I started and I saw that, uh, who was it? Archie's dad had passed away so like I was like what a time to start R Riverdale. It's a crazy show. I'm already like, I think I'm done with the first season almost. I think I have like one or two more episodes. That's pretty cool. And then I was watching Champions League. Ajax beat Real Madrid 4-1. And Real Madrid is out of the Champions League, just like that. But, uh, yeah, I want to talk about my reoccurring injuries. Um, so, I do have some injuries and strains on my body right now. Uh, I'd say the most or the least painful one currently are my right hip flexor and my right hamstring and a little bit of my left hamstring. Um, I played soccer for my whole life basically and I never really gave it time to rest for a long period of time. So this semester I'm actually taking club soccer off and I'm focusing more on powerlifting um, and working out. So my right hamstring feels I'd say 90 to 100% times better than it used to be. Um, I would wake up after every leg day or actually every day with my right one my right hamstring a little bit tighter than my left one. So stretching down, I would feel more pain in my right one and be uncomfortable. And so that's that. My hip flexors, they really, they feel a little better. I've been adding a little bit more mobility to my warm-ups every morning. Um, just walking around a little bit more, get doing some opening the gates and stuff, you know. And so yeah. And then my most recent injuries, uh, most recent one is my right trap, um, so along the trap and actually along a little bit of my neck, I was benching and it was only maybe 60% of my max. And it was a set of eight. In the middle of my set, I felt a random tweak on that area and I thought it was just like, you know, some kind of like shock or something. But I still have maybe like a little bit left of it. I'd say it's about 85 to 90% heal. Um, and then a little bit before that, I did strain, uh, can't really tell if you can see, it's right inside, so like where my scapula would, where my scapula would be, um, like if this was a spine and then these are the shoulder blades, it'd be like a little bit along the shoulder blade. Um, that's what hurt for like the past week, and it's, I'd say it's gone by now, um, can't really feel it. And then before that, I'd say about six weeks ago, I hurt the inside of my elbow. There's like a tendon right here, I guess, or maybe some nerves. Uh, I was playing and I got a ball over the top and I was sprinting for it and I got tackled from behind. And then as I was landing, my arm landed stiff and it hyperextended. So that was painful. I never really let it heal. Um, I'm just going a little bit lighter in all my sets. I'd say it's... 90% heal. Um, I can definitely feel it if I put too much tension on my triceps. So if I flex too much, I can definitely feel the inside of it flexing too and it kind of hurts. But my way of recovering is Tiger Ball. So if you don't know what Tiger Ball is, feel 
focus. Um, there we go. Um, Tiger Balm is a secret Asian remedy for any muscle, joint, nerve pain, they say. Um, I used to use this a lot when I was younger. Um, we used to have like the oil version of this. I forgot what it's called, like an ailment or something. I don't know. This is an ointment, so it's like, it looks like this. It's like a, like a Vaseline. And then you just scoop some up and then you rest on your neck. And it's really like, it's really refreshing. I say it's just like icy hot times a thousand. It's really good. It's definitely helped me overcome my shoulder pain and my elbow pain. The past two days I've been using this. Um, it smells really strong, very minty. And yeah, that's about it. So guys, that's all I really have to talk about today. This is my one week update. Here, I'll show you guys really quick. My physique, kinda, I guess my upper portion. Oh, this is kinda how I'm looking right now. <sighs> Lats are popping a little more. Um, and it's a kind of a good sign. My obliques are pretty big. But with that being set aside, that ends the video and I'll catch you guys up in another week. Spring break is next week and I'll be in clean. So see you guys later and forever be better. Like before, so